In this presentation, we're going to look at how DNA controls the production of polypeptides. Now, polypeptides are uh, chains of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. And DNA is the structure that holds all the hereditary information that we need uh, to uh, make us as individual organisms. DNA does a couple of things. One of them is DNA replication, which we've previously looked at. Now, DNA replication is uh, for the process of mitosis, growth and repair, where the DNA uh, replicates itself uh, exactly uh, to make two DNA chains before it divides into two daughter cells. The second is meiosis, where the DNA again replicates exactly before it goes through uh, two meiotic divisions to make four daughter cells, and these are our gametes sperm in, uh, in males and the egg in, in females. The first process of polypeptide synthesis is what we call transcription. Transcription begins by copying this segment of, uh, copying a segment of DNA and this is our DNA inside and we have our nucleus with our nuclear membrane. And we may recall that the nuclear membrane is a double membrane. However, it has pores. It has nuclear pores uh, all the way along it to allow RNA material to, uh, to move from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. So the first step in creating a poly polypeptide chain is the uh, RNA polymerase, so RNA polymerase binds to the promoter. Okay, the promoter is this section here. So the RNA polymerase, we'll call this step one, binds to the promoter and makes the DNA unzip. Now the DNA unzips breaking hydrogen bonds, so hydrogen bonds that exist between the double-stranded DNA. So it unzips and it exposes this area here that is going to act as a template. So this is the template that will be copied. Now it copies it and makes it into a messenger RNA. This is mRNA or messenger RNA. So that is copied. Now there is a couple of differences in the messenger RNA that need to be explored before we move any further. So messenger RNA as compared to DNA will have a different nucleotides. A nucleotide is a subunit made up of the sugar, the phosphate group and the nitrogenous base. So messenger RNA has a different nucleotide in, in as much as there is a ribose sugar rather than a deoxyribose sugar in DNA. So the second thing is that at messenger RNA is single-stranded. It's a single strand rather than a double strand wound into a double helix. And thirdly, the thymine T is replaced by uracil U. It's replaced by uracil and that will be U. The DNA acts as a template and RNA, so step two, RNA molecules that are complementary to DNA assemble. So what we mean by complementary is that uh, if uh, C will be complementary to G, so a G uh, nucleotide will assemble, and T will be complementary to A and so forth. So if we wanted to annotate these here we could say that uh, if this one was A then this one would be U because U replaces the T. If this was a, she, a C, that would be complementary to a G. G would be complementary to a C. 
and T would be complementary to an A and so forth and that complementary messenger RNA strand assembles. The next step is that this messenger RNA, once it has copied the whole uh, segment that needs to be copied, it moves out of. So point three, messenger RNA moves from nucleus to cytoplasm. And it does this through the nuclear pore. Once it moves from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, it meets up with this structure called a ribosome. It's in two structural units. And they, they join together around the mRNA strand. So this is our mRNA, ready to undergo a process that we call translation. The translation is the second segment, so translation. So mRNA meets up with the ribosome, and those ribosomes that we remember from prelim are all along the endoplasmic reticulum that surrounds the nucleus, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now the way that it reads this, the ribosome reads the mRNA. Now to do this, it must start with a start code. So it must start with a start code. Now this start code is U, A, C. Now that's important that it, it uh, knows when to start copying the DNA. Now it also reads these things in what we call triplets. Now another name for these triplets is called a codon. A triplet or codon. So it's read in segments of triplets or what we call codons. So the messenger RNA moves through the ribosome, it's read uh, in triplets, and it draws in a complementary tRNA. So this, this structure here is called a tRNA. And they're drawn in to the complementary uh, codon. So they make a, have an anticodon. So this is anticodon and the appropriate one is drawn in at the time. So if this segment here was another C and we'll put a A and we'll put a another C, it would be read as G U G. It is the anticodon, it is complementary. So we always have complementary base pairings. Now the tRNA comes in and binds periodically. So let's get that down. So step four, mRNA codon, which is our triplet, binds temporarily to tRNA with anticodon triplet. Now added to this, these tRNAs carry an amino acid. Now these amino acids, there are numerous of them, and they are attached to the transfer RNA that is specific to this anticodon. So the anticodon carries in a specific amino acid. It temporarily binds, and once it binds, the next part of uh, the process occurs. So once it binds, the amino acids are spliced off. They're spliced off and attached to the ribosome. The amino acids are spliced off uh, the tRNA and attached to the ribosome and we form a growing polypeptide chain. So this is six, so
growing polypeptide chain. So very much like the start sequence, there is also stop sequences along the messenger RNA chain. So say for instance this last segment is our stop sequence. So once a stop sequence is read on the messenger RNA, the polypeptide chain breaks away. The polypeptide chain will break away. Now the final process of this uh, is that the polypeptide is, is then joined by other polypeptides and further changed into a protein. Okay, so the final part, and we'll put this right here under seven, so one stops. Sequence is reached. Polypeptide breaks away. Now it may undergo further folding and joining of other polypeptide chains to make a protein. One messenger RNA may be copied by many ribosomes at the one time, so we're making multiple polypeptide chains at the one time. At the end of the process, the messenger RNA will be broken down, and it will be broken down into its component products to be reused again. So these RNA nucleotides can be uh, reused again with inside the nucleus. So let's do a little bit of a summary of polypeptide synthesis. First of all, inside the nucleus, DNA must unwind. It unwinds at the promoter, and the DNA sequence that exposes acts as a template. Now that template gives rise to a messenger RNA strand, and the messenger RNA strand is complementary to the template that exists on the DNA. The messenger RNA strand then moves from the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Once in the cytoplasm, it meets up with a ribosome which reads the code on the messenger RNA. Now that code is read in triplets and the messenger RNA, those triplets are called codons and it must start with a start code and that start code being UAC. So they're read in triplets and the ribosome draws in the appropriate transfer RNA. And again, this works by complementary base pairing. So these are complementary to each other. They are complementary to each other to ensure that the correct polypeptide is made. The transfer RNA brings in amino acids. These amino acids bind to each other to form polypeptide chains. So amino acids with polypeptide bonds between them and the transfer RNA disappears into the cytoplasm again to redo its job. At the end of the sequence on the messenger RNA, a stop sequence is reached and the polypeptide chain is let go from the ribosome and is joined possibly by other polypeptide chains and is further folded in to make a protein. Thank you to all for your time and I hope you have enjoyed this presentation.